Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 in the Baron A58 Professional Series with Hangar Control. Today, I have been setting up my Stream Deck XL the way I want it for a permanent use case, and I figured I would show you guys how I do it and what tools I use to find all my different variables to toggle my button states as well as actuate the different buttons and switches. So, stick around guys, because hopefully you'll find something cool to uh, use to set up in your own simulation experience. If you are interested in any of my tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, or simply interested in supporting the channel, consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future guides that come down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below. Alright folks, so first off, for those who don't know, Hangar Control is an application that I am developing and you can find it at overkillsimulations.com. Create an account, go to your account page, and then you can download the software for a free, unrestricted, five-day trial to test out Hangar Control for your own uh, benefit and see if you like it or not and are willing to purchase it. Hangar Control is meant to be an all-in-one platform that is continuously growing. Currently, it can launch all of your applications through a profile that you create. It can save your Windows positions. You can toggle Windows forward and aft basically minimizing and maximizing with a click of a button. It can clearly, as you guys can see here on the screen, bind pretty much all of your controls. Of course, hardware is still uh, being added to it each week. And then finally, it can also control all of your mods, tools, add-ons, profiles, config files, etc., etc., while making a backup of the existing files and be able to restore them to a later point if necessary upon much much more uh, i've only scratched the surface to what it can do and again you can find it at overkillsimulations.com now let's get into what we're here to talk about okay so let's go ahead and get started here so i've already done a little bit and this is what sort of made me say hey people might like to actually see this so let's see here so right now if i got my master battery I've got my left alternator. I've got my right alternator. Okay. And what you guys are seeing here on the screen is exactly what I'm seeing on the physical device. So let's turn those off. And I'm just going to show you guys how I got it. This isn't going to be a particularly long video. Show you guys a few of these. And if it helps you, great. If not, well, then, you know, tell me to go jump off a cliff. You know, don't do that. That would actually be really mean. So let's see. We're going to click in here. The next one I'm going to work on is my avionics switch. So I'm just going to pull it up now. And again, you want your behaviors window up. You want to make sure you go to tools. I know you guys can't see it because hanger control is blocking it. But underneath this, there is literally that says behaviors under tools. You have to have dev mode turned on. You do that from the main menu. Go to settings, advanced, and dev mode. Turn it on. Then when you'll see this bar. You go tools, and it literally says behaviors. Okay? And then you'll be presented with this guy right here. Okay? You can see right there it says behaviors. Okay? Um, okay, so now let me show you guys how we're going to do this. <clears throat> so then I'm going to mouse over. I'm clicked into the sim. Notice that when I click in here, the window is blue. When I click in the cockpit, it turns gray or black. That's what you want. So then I'm going to mouse over my avionics switch. I'm going to hit left control and G for golf. Okay. You can see it changed electrical switch, avionics bus. Okay, I had done that right before. Okay, and then so you can see here you have your SIMVAR value. This is going to come important in a minute. And then you have your actions. You can use any one of these. Okay, any one of these will trigger the event that you want. Now, because we're using a push button like on the stream deck, I want toggle. Right, so this is what I'm going to be interested in. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to come in here. This is just for hanger controls purpose now. And we're going to go button and variable. I'm going to go single press. And then I want to configure the action. I'm going to browse events because I want sim connect. And we want avionics. I have my caps lock on. Sorry. And toggle avionics master. That's going to work just fine for what we're doing here. And we're going to hit OK. I'm going to hit OK again. That handles the event. Now we're going to come on down. I'm going to find my icon. And we're already in the avionics section, but let's keep looking here. This one actually looks different. I don't know that I've seen this one before. Oh, yes, I do. I remember making that. I don't like those, actually. kind of wish I hadn't done those. Uh, that explains why I didn't remember it. Like, I thought those ones were kind of ugly. Um, I want... That's more of a Boeing style, but it's kind of cool still. Yeah, let's use these. What's here? Full rocker? Oh, that's blue. I think I did a red one, too, didn't I? 
No, they're both too blue. Let's use the blue one. I like the blue. I like blue. Um, yeah, we'll use that one. So we'll hit save. Then I'm going to come in and I'm just going to set my icon size. I don't know if that actually displays that or not. It does not. So, but on your physical device, like on my physical device right now, I can actually see the icon size changing. So we want full. I, very seldomly I could think that anybody wouldn't want the full. Don't have to worry about the label. It's labeled on the button. Don't worry about a display variable. We're not doing any kind of display. But we are doing the toggle state. So I'm going to change this to simulator driven. I'm going to edit the state. And actually, I don't even have to do that from here. Because I have everything I need right here. So check it out. I'm going to do A colon. The A colon sim, or indicates a sim variable or an A var. And then we're just going to write what we see. Circuit switch on colon 59. Okay. That is all we need is right here, the sim var. So I'm going to hit save. And then now you can test a couple different ways. If I toggle this, boom, there's the switch. And then I'll use my button on my stream deck. Boom, there we go again. Okay, so now I've got my, and this um, this will work with just about anything, guys. There, You may run into a few that don't have variables or don't have particular, or a particular uh, item that you're looking for. All right, so let's see here. Um, I mean, you could literally set this up exactly how we wanted. You know, I haven't decided how I want to do all this yet. But, like, let's say we want to do the prop sync. We can add the prop sync. So I'm going to do the same thing like we did before. Oops. And we're going to hit Control-G. So like this one. This one does not have it, which tells me that this one might be an LVAR. All right. So by clicking on the mouse interaction, you actually have the missing pieces. And this is the other part I want to show you guys. This is an LVAR. And there's your LVAR right there. LVAR, prop, sync, switch. And then you would set one or zero. Or however many positions it had. In this case, it's only got two, so you got zero. And then there's our AVAR indicator for our toggle. So, let me show you how this all comes together with this. We're going to do the same thing before. Single press. Now we got to configure the action. This one gets a little bit trickier. But we're going to go to LVAR. What did I select? I don't think I grabbed what I wanted. I didn't grab anything. Let's change the LVAR. There we go. That was weird. I don't know how I did that. But anyway, so now we're going to find that. And we're just going to look for prop. Is it just prop sync? Yep. And we're going to make sure it matches. Prop sync switch. Prop sync switch. There it is. Double click it. Now it comes in here. Now again, we're using a push button. Right? So with a push button, we need it to toggle. Okay? And we can test it. Boom! There it is. Okay? And we're just going to hit save. Okay? Now, the cool part is, with the icon, we can make our own. So we're going to go generic. Uh, I think I have a white one in here somewhere. I need to adjust the coloring options. There it is. We'll use the white one. Okay? And we'll just hit select icon. Label, and we're going to call this prop sync. Now I know you guys can't see it at the moment, but I'm gonna I'm watching my physical device, and you guys can actually watch it down here. This is all the changes. Everything that I'm seeing here is exactly what I'm seeing on my device. So we've got that. Let's change the position to say forty percent. Let's increase our font size to well. Let's go eighteen. And then what we'll do instead is bring this down a line. And then I'm going to bring this up to like 30%. There we go. That's a bit better, right? And if we want to, we can change the font color, but I'm not going to worry about that for, for this particular situation. Although I think I'm going to go like 25. There we go. That's a bit better. Maybe like 28. Yeah, there it is. 28 looks nice. And then the cool thing is, is when it comes to the toggle event, you can use the AVAR. But you can also use the LVAR. So this makes this super simple. Right? So we can literally come in here and I can copy either one of those. Okay? I can use the LVAR and position one versus zero. Or I can do the, like for example, 
if we just come in here, we go again, look for that prop sink. Prop sync switch right there. We want it to change when it's on one. And we hit save. Boom. Now, I probably should do something about the color <laughs> of the font, but you guys get the gist. I sort of didn't think about that, did I? So um, a real cool tool that I like to use for colors, honestly, is just I typically go to like chat GPT or something like that. So here, let me I'm, I'm just going to ask him because I like to use the voice thing. But in this case, let's see here. Uh, I got to think of color that's going to work with that. Um, red, maybe? All right, so I just go, and you can Google this however you want, but you're going to Google what is the hex color for red that will look good on white for text. And he'll usually come back and give you a couple of different options. All right, so yeah, he gave me, let's see here. First, he's asking, you want something dark enough for contrast, neon, blah, blah. So, yeah, he gave me best all-around choice. He gave me slightly brighter. He gave me, like, four different choices here. So, here, we're just going to grab one of these. Now, I'm going to come in here. Find my font. There it is. Hit save. There you go. That looks nice. And now, if I toggle it, let's see if it disappears. No, looks great. That works. Nice. Cool. So you guys got the gist, and you can do this with just about anything. Just about anything in the cockpit will have something similar. At the very least, if it doesn't have an, a direct button, it should show you the LVAR. If it doesn't show you the LVAR, it should give you the variable. The variable usually translates to a B event. If it has a B event, it'll actually have the input events like we saw before uh, when we were looking at the uh, avionics. Okay, these are all B events. Okay. So, and even then, you can typically go and you can find, like I said, if you go scroll to the bottom of a B event, you'll be able to find the variables that interact with it. One more thing I figured I would show you guys is I know people struggle a lot with these different uh, knobs and stuff. So let me show you something real quick. If we come over here to the heading one and do the same thing just like we did before, you guys can see a lot of the same stuff. So here's your B event, instrument, heading bug, increase, but it's also a K event, so you can find that under standard sim connect. But here's those again. And then SimVar, if you want your heading to actually display, let me, you know what, let me show you guys that real quick. So let's say I wanted my heading, what, my, what the aircraft's actual heading is, uh, to display on the, actually no, sorry, that'd be the heading bug target, the heading bug target to display on one of my buttons. So let's do this again. We'll do variable display. We're not gonna do anything else. I've only wanted it to do a variable, right? So now I can come in here. And let's see here. Um, I don't know. Heading bug, whatever you want. Heading target. Yeah, you guys will know what I'm talking about. We're, we're, we're doing the heading bug, all right? So then now, insert the SimVar token. What we're going to be looking for is, where was that? Right here. Autopilot heading bug. Oh, sorry. Got distracted. Okay, so to find the token, let me show you. You can do a couple of different things. Keep it simple. Don't overthink it. We're going to look for heading. I'm just going to change this to sim bars. Heading target. Okay. This is how Microsoft Flight Simulator is actually identifying this. But I want you to pay attention to something here because you guys are going to notice a difference here. We want this to just be no decimals, right? It's just a heading. We're going to select our target. We're going to hit insert token. But pay attention to the token or this will get you. So, for example, let's do this. Uh, let's take the value position to, well, here, let's bring this up. First of all, let's make this like 16. Actually, let's make that like 24 just to be different. Let's bring that up. There we go. So we can actually see something here. Okay. And then let's set our position here. Is that actually moving the way it's supposed to? It did. Okay. I wanted to make sure. So it will stack itself. That actually works out pretty well. I'm actually okay with that, to be honest with you. Okay, good. Yeah, that works. I can live with that. So anyway, watch as we hit save. Notice that we get nothing out of this. And here's why. Remember I told you, watch that colon one. It will get you. So we're going to come in here. 
and it's real simple. We're just going to go right to the end of that DIR, the direction, add that colon one, look at already populated. All right, so the last thing I want to show you guys is something that tends to be a gotcha for a lot of people. Um, and it was for me too, again, until I started diving into all this significantly deeper. So first, let's talk about our button that we just created, our toggle pedo heap, okay? It is literally bound to toggle pedo, pedo heap. But as you guys notice, okay, there it is, pedo heat toggle. But it, when we push it, it's only that one, right? But if we click on the right one, it's the same thing, pedo heat toggle. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how we make this all work. All right, so first thing with the Stream Deck, at least through hanger control, easy way to do it is just a copy button. And we're just going to right click again and hit paste. Sometimes you have to right click more than once. I'm working on that, it's the targeting. Now we're gonna click in here and we're going to adjust it. We need to set the icon size. We're gonna change the verbiage to right. Oops. Okay, now how do we adjust the SIM connect event? Notice this one's pedo heat toggle one. That's the variable. Okay, so if we come in here, we're still using the pedo heat toggle. We know that that's true because it's right here, but we're gonna use that variable. Very simple. Two. Okay. And we're going to hit save. And then now when we flip that on. Oh, sorry. When we push the button. Okay. We're pushing the button. But now how do we get the variable right? So to get our variable right. So that way the button changes state. That's when we do what we did before. And we find this guy. There's our circuit just like we did with the first one. And we're gonna go 37. And now when I push the button, oops, bing, dong, ding, ding, dong, dong. Anyways, so another just real quick gotcha that I wanted to show you guys that your information is actually always right there. It's just sometimes not in the easiest of formats. So hope you guys uh, found that useful.